голяма, има голяма международна компания, която за графичен дизайн, за да ви зададе въпроса какъв е твоят тип. Значи, много пъти съм го разказвала, говорили сме си за нашето училище и тази идея всъщност я имаме, може би, от една-две години. Две години да. а, и мисля, че ще ви бъде много полезно. А, първо за този час, а, по, а, който имаме за шрифта и колко е важен шрифта. И, и, и смятам, че той е човек, който най-добре ще ни обясни и ще ни разкаже. И да видите и една друга, един друг аспект в, в дизайна, а, на който ние не сме обръщали внимание като потребители, а постоянно го срещаме, той е всяка сред нас. И му давам думата Рилай и Парабон. Okay, благодаря. Първо искам да благодаря нали, на вас, че сте тук и нали, за организаторите. И наистина две години се заканяме да бъдем тук, но понеже живея в чуждина, от мой ексент ще разберете, че моят български не е перфектен. Ако се чудите, баща ми си лиц, майка ми е българка, роден съм в Овей, живял съм в Оман, работя съм в Дубай, брат ми е канадец, чичо ми е англичанец и от две години съм в България. Така, аз предпочитам да съм по-полезен към вашето време. И за да изиквате бариери, които все пак имат в по-професионалните терми. Имели някои проблеми с английския. Аз всичко разбирам на български и мога да отговаря на някои въпроси, ако имате. Но ако не ви е проблем да комуникирам а, тази презентация на английски, който има проблем с комуникация, просто да се дига ръката от сега само да знам, защото може да, да ми помогнат колегите тук с превода. Anyone has any issues with the communicating with English? You. Okay. All right. So, um, <laughs> smisal novo, malco, or no? Mal. Okay. Dobre. I mean, should we have? Dobre. Okay. Um, should we put? Uh, try inter, uh, try interactive. Така че може да питате въпроси, да спрете ме кажете в момент, когато имам въпрос. Така че това е не лекция. Не съм на театър, вие не сте публика. Нали, тук е за конверзейшн. Нали, за да разберем за тази. Окей? Така. Така че ще почна. А, ще почна тук. Окей. So, the whole concept is what's your type as in typography? Because uh, type has a personality and that we will now we learned about the different types. I see an Iron Maiden t-shirt, it has a very nice typography, it's a classic, it's a unique typography, but it's not only in t-shirts, it's everywhere as we can see. Now, my colleague has made an introduction, this is part of the team of Paragon, and uh, today, that's, that was me, I'm still here, Diana, she's over there, Costa, uh, he's still in Kuwait, and, uh, and this is another press release about uh, the work being featured in books, as uh, uh, Desi just mentioned. So our work is published on behalf of our client's project, International Books. In fact, it's in more than 69 books. These are some of the actual books, if you're interested in them. Uh, if you're not, you should be at least interested in this book, because it's on typography and how it changes behavior, how typography changes behavior. Uh, it's by Mirko Ilic, a very famous designer. Um, from former Yugoslavia, he worked under uh, the, the great uh, designer who passed away. You probably know his work, the I Love New York logo. Okay, so he worked with that with that guy. So this is all about our awards. We have a website and about the lectures. I usually get invited into different universities and write some opinion pieces on design uh, in magazines. So fast forwarding all of this and going to the important, more important stuff. So, uh, can anyone read what's written here? Teach. Teach, okay. Learn. Any other opinion? Learn. Learn, okay, good. So, that's the magic of typography. It can have dual meanings, it can communicate different things. Yeah, this is an example of the teach and learn for, for in this language. Yes and no. Yes could be no, no could be yes. 
So you can assign meanings to your typography. Typography is everywhere, but design, but typographic design is complex. And the more you understand the the principles of the art, or uh, at least the basics of typography, the better uh, you uh, it will enhance your work. But regardless in which field you choose, it will always enhance your work or at least your style. Okay. So, for example, it's on book, it's on book covers. So this is a book cover that we designed, a revolution of one. So the typeface had to be very classic and calm. While in this book, which is called The Brand Gap, the typography is used very creatively to create a gap, to communicate the concept of the branding gap. It's also available in magazines. This is the previous version of the magazine, and this is where we did the redesign. So by changing the the headings and changing the, the choice of typeface and the size of typeface, it gave it a totally different look and feel. Also, typography can, can, can mean you can turn a letter into a sign. When we won eight, our first eight awards at the Summit International Creative Awards, these are the awards, we actually played with the typeface. We took the digit eight, tilted it, and saw it as an infinity sign. So it became eight awards infinite creativity. In fact, we went a bit too far and we actually replaced the, this letter because phonetically the eight, so creativity. Um, in this example of the Audi app that we did, the typeface is actually a sans serif typeface and as you can see it's italic, but actually uh, it's moving forward because it's a modern car, it's a fast car, so using that movement in the typeface gives uh, in the impression of a more dynamic and uh, uh, you know a more dynamic car or a faster car. Uh, also, typography can be used as art. Anyone can read the matrix. You only see the matrix. So anyone can tell anything from here. You see, and you can identify this visual. Maybe it's Gandhi. Yes, you're right. You see Gandhi. Very good. So you're able to break the code. So basically, we're surrounded with typography. Sometimes it's, very, it's in your face, sometimes it's subtle. Great design is the visible design. It functions without being in your face. So this is an example uh, of the typography. Also, typography is used in posters. And you can see how creatively they have turned uh, you know, this typ the typography, the script, into classical picture, etc. So typography is also used in communication. This is an example that we did in Kuwait for a, on a pro bono basis for the breast cancer campaign. And uh, if those who haven't been to Kuwait, don't go there. Those who have been uh, would know that uh, you know any exposure of flesh or is, is prohibited by law. So for the sensitive topic of breast cancer, how do you uh, talk about breast cancer, draw attention to breast cancer without showing breast? Well, to the typography. Just do the outline and put the message there. This actually won an award in the summit, I think it was featured here, yeah, a silver. It was shortlisted at the Mina Middle East and North Africa Crystal Awards. Uh, the same treatment was adopted into another language, which is the local main local language, which is Arabic. Okay, the letters look different, but the concept is the same. Again, type is flexible. It doesn't have to be from left to right. It doesn't have to be in a straight line. It could be but not necessarily. Free your mind and you'll be more flexible with, uh, with the typography. It's like clay. You shape it into what you want it to be. Same thing as in typography. It's also available in packaging design. We see it all the time in branding, in the logos, uh, on different packaging, even in the string which is called KGB, which I have nothing to do with the KGB. Uh, it's also available in furniture. I see, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of beautiful woodwork here, created by teachers and students alike. And see, this is Arabic calligraphy or typography in furniture. As I was preparing this presentation, I actually stopped by a shop and I saw this for sale. It's again, each one of those drawers is a different letter type. So typography is in our furniture, also in our homes. It's on plates. It's on different tables, in packaging, in logos, 
uh, even a simple communication. Life is too short, you know, to work non-stop. This was somewhere in Bulgaria when I was uh, roaming around exploring the country. Uh, this is on my computer, so it communicates uh, warnings, danger, like the stop sign, etc. Also, it's important to have good command of typography. When you graduate, you probably want to do your own thing, but you want to work for someone else's organization in a CV. This is an actual CV that was submitted to my company. I like the CV. So the guys in Dubai, so the information, there's a hierarchy. It's a sensor uh, typeface, it's, uh, so it's modern. Uh, it shows the important information, the contact detail, the location, the efficiency in the software, and the clearly communicated skills of the applicant, of course, in his name. Uh, it's also an art. Calligraphy is also an art, not only furniture. This is an example in Doha. And in Doha, they have this very interesting uh, calligraphic element, uh, which, which is actually this entire statement. And uh, this is something that we personally did with my team in the occasion of Ramadan, which is like Christmas, your version of Christmas. And this is one of the most important shopping malls, 316 Kuwait. So, based on a typography with a like Merry Christmas uh, message, that's the shape. It was implemented on below the line or an offset printing on packaging and an entire facade from outside, even in the inside as environmental graphics. Uh, this is another creative use of typography where the letter forms are actually embedded into the facade of the building and uh, of course the shadow created by the sun changes and the other word love, curiosity, fame, charm, choice. Okay? And even to a building, Dubai, um, this is an entire building, this is the train, so you can see the scale of the building. And it's all made of typography or calligraphy. So again, it's everywhere. You can't escape it even if you wanted to. So why not make sure that we have the proper skill? Can okay, anyone read what's written here? You matter, you matter, don't give up. Anyone can read it? No, no, not really. What you? Matter, you, don't. you don't matter, give up. Okay, so again, see how important it is to uh, the kerning, the legging, the spacing. You're both right, by the way. Uh, this is an example of bad design. Uh, it does not communicate clearly and effectively. Another good example of bad design that can affect your life in a country if you are American, then that would be the butterfly ballot in the United States where Al Gore was supposed to be president, but he lost because some typographer, graphic designer, desktop publisher, poem, whatever you want to call him, did a bad job in designing the actual form. So it ended up people who wanted to vote for Al Gore were actually filling in the place that corresponded to his opponent, okay? So bad design affects not only your style and your environment, even, you know, your laws and taxes, etc. So just like this one, make sure you communicate clearly and effectively. So the t in terminology, what is actually the definition of typography? It's a noun, it's the arrangement of style and appearance of type and typefaces. We use the term typeface and type interchangeably, but there is a difference, and we'll talk about that. So in general, some of the type functions are communication, design, and art. And ironically, the word communication is vast, because mainly we're using, uh, using it in communication. And in art, we're using it in you know, less and less typography and art. Of course, design is everywhere. So, from all of these typographical appliances of typography, we're going to be talking today about visual identity, logos, and corporate identity systems. Because this topic is too big, too wide, and too deep to be covered by me or anybody else in just an hour or an hour and 20 minutes. Many books have been written about it, many books are still being written about it. So, this is just to spark your uh, curiosity, interest for you to, to, you know, to explore more or to learn more about this interesting topic. Okay? Of course, in the beginning, there were no letters, as we know them. There were pictures. So we started as artists and then became typographers. 
maybe it's a revolution, not a revolution, but who's to say? So, the letters are actually pictures. Think of them as visuals, because they are visuals. And uh, the fonts that we use, and which, which comes actually from the French word fonte, which means cast and metal. So fonte is cast and metal. So when you hear font, remember it's a French word, and that's where the confusion is because you see font or fonte is a French word, but then the printing press there was German. Anyone knows who this shady character over there? My friend. Anyone knows this bearded guy? It's not Bin Laden. It's not Duke Laden. It's uh. Is it not? No. Well, actually, you see, you're not paying attention to the poem because his name is written under his Gutenberg, and we all know that Gutenberg invented the printing press and Google type, right? Sorry? Yes. yes, actually not. <laughs> actually not. The, the actual printing press was invented by the Chinese 800 years before Gutenberg. But they, had, they didn't have mobile type, and this was all in wood blocks. Okay? And then the Koreans, uh, and then the Koreans, they made the first movable cast iron type. 300 years before Gutenberg. So, always have a curious mind, always explore, always ask questions, don't take anything at face value, you're artists, right? You're not politicians. So, have a critical mind, have critical thinking, okay? Okay, now, these are the basic letter forms. Remember I said letters are actual pictures, just like hieroglyphics. So, you can see here, from all these objects, that these are in the forms of letters, correct? Anyone doesn't see the L or the M or the B? You see this shape, similar to this one, right? C, this one, looks similar. Okay, so once you see letters as images, you would have freed your mind a bit more. Okay, but... Other than the letters that we need to free your mind, you need to understand why these letters look like this. But let's start with the alpha numeric, with the alpha, you know, with the numeric, you know, the numbers. See, this is, this were the Latin numbers. What you're using right now are actually, the origin are actually Arabic numbers. And these are the actual Roman numbers. You know that already, right? Okay. But do you know why this letter, why the 1 and the 2 and 3 look in this shape? Do you know? She said... Sorry? The angle. The angle is perfect. Okay, great. Yeah. Because this one has one angle, two angles, three angles, eight angles, and that's why the 0 has no angles, and that's why it has this shape. Okay? That's great. Very few people know this. Okay? What are you studying? Interior. I should use it, I should study typography, I'm joking, yeah, yeah. study, study whatever you want, but it's good to know, okay? So this is how uh, the, the shape of the letter evolved and came from. Okay, now, taking again the basic shapes, you know, circle, half circle, horizontal, vertical, and slanted. This, uh, this might give you an idea where these shapes come from. So these are the basic shapes that make all the letters that we have today. Okay, so right here, you can see this, this set of letters is all combined by either vertical or horizontal. This one is by half circles or circles. This one by the slantedness. You see this slant is like the Z, like the Y, like the X, the W, the D, and so on and so forth. And this one is a combination of these, uh, these things. Okay, so just uh, something to bear in mind when you want to create your own typeface. Because I wanted to create my own typeface. And I saw that for my wife, uh, who's Bulgarian, it's very difficult for her to read this. 
Okay, so thought and I have other friends that are not Arab speaking, and they have difficulty reading this. So I thought, why don't we apply the same principles that were uh, the fundamental of the Latin typography and try to transform these more complicated shapes that are of letters that are written in one way in the beginning of the word, a different way in the center of the word, a different way at the end of the word, and a yet another different way if it's separated as part of a word. So there's four ways to write each of those letters. So I brought it down to its basic geometrical shape, and this was the end, this is, was the result, you know. Uh, and uh, okay, and from this came this. So you see, this letter is actually this letter. This letter is this letter. Okay. Uh, this is from the 17th century, the same letters, but written uh, through the process of printing on wooden blocks. Okay, so yes, you can create your own typeface. There are free of charge software uh, for using that, and there are ones that you pay for, like for photographer. All you have to do is just download the typeface that you like, and map it, make changes, and upload it. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go into the font that talk to me because it is, like I said, it's too detailed. There's a lot of details to know. But what you need to know that there are basically two groups, mainly, of serif and sans serif. Serif means those, those bat wings that were eaten by a Chinese guy in Wuhan and gave us COVID. And sans serif without the, without the wings. Okay, so wings, no wings. So these are all serifs. In fact, every type of a serif from this different one has a different name and every part has a different name but that is for a deeper course on actual typography so I'm not going to bore you with this but I wanted to see something interesting because we keep saying that letters are pictures or the brain works in different ways look at this one, can anyone read this aloud? anyone? <laughs> Okay, have you noticed something interesting? <laughs> exactly. This is wrong spelling. But yet, your mind is so intelligent that it was able to identify, just by identifying the first letter and the last letter of a word, your mind already has Googled it, researched it, pulled it out, and placed it there with Google Translate. So the mind is very creative. So, you see, these are symbols, just like hieroglyphics, and your mind identifies them and assigns a value. Okay, you can easily now read this, correct? Like, okay? So what did your mind just do? Your mind is smart enough to say, hey, a letter, which is a picture of this sort, can be replaced by a digit that looks like this letter. So already your mind is identifying that every letter can be written in different ways and have different forms. Correct right now. This is also maybe interesting. This is an actual quote by Stephen King. So anyone can read this? Intelligence is the ability to adapt changes. Excellent. So your mind has <laughs> your intelligent your intelligent minds have already immediately interpreted every single letter and every single digit that replaced a letter and you were able to read it without a hitch. Because you already was given a hint. Once you're given a hint, you know, you are able to easily... In fact, even if you're not given the hint, your mind will immediately try to decipher, to decode the message that has been encoded. Like Shannon or Weaver communication theory, message encoded and decoded as intended. So, it already decoded it. Now, look how your mind now is becoming more flexible and loose. Anyone can read what's on my left. Anyone hungry? You guys hungry? You cannot read? You don't know Chinese? Or maybe it's Japanese? Or how do I know? How's your English, by the way? Ah, okay. To ease your agony. But although I like to hear and suffer a little bit more. Because this is how you free your mind. You have to force your mind sometimes to think. To think is the most important important and most difficult thing that humans as a species can do. Although some monkeys are going to use tools and to think. 
You know this test, the psychological test, you open a sheet of paper, you fold it in half, you put a few drops of ink, you close it, you smudge it, you open it, and you say, yeah, what is this? Okay, so this is this kind of this test. Okay, this is uh, E18, EAT. Eat. Okay, now the letter T is already, you know, symmetrical. And the letter A is symmetrical. Letter E. All you have to do is just let go, you know, just take the blue pill, uh, take the red pill, don't take the blue pill, you know. Open your mind, and now you can see it in a different way. In fact, now that you have this clue, can anyone read the one next to it? Ten, 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 ten by ten. So yeah. what you what you just did is now if you're given a clue, just like a digit, you're able to decipher this one. In fact, you took it a step further. You already read it, even if so this one is upside down. Correct? So it's ten by ten. Perfect. How about this one now? Any Japanese, Chinese speaking people in the audience? No? Okay, me too. Actually, this is a similar experiment. This is, this is done in English. These two are done in Arabic. This was done by me personally. This is not by me, and it's brilliant. Uh, I wrote a friend's name, Kawazan Isper. And that's his name, written in uh, a typographic style that is taking the images of an actual Kinji typeface or Kinji letters and seeing how they look like, uh, you know, an Arabic letter. So that's actually Arabic, not Chinese or Japanese. Now, why did I do that? Because actually I like the fact that some people were uh, interchanging uh, digits or numerals with letters, and so they, that's interesting. Maybe you can try it in another way. So when I saw other people doing it in this way, and like this, said, why the hell shouldn't I try it? So that's an experiment, okay? So, here it's a very long statement, but people who know Arabic were immediately able to read it. And I'll tell you what the key is. The key was this word. Because this was very easy for them to read it. Of course, Arabic is read from right to left. All other languages from left to right. Japanese and Chinese from top to bottom. So go figure who's right and who's wrong, you know. <laughs> okay, but this is the key word. Just like the, the word like had an I as a digit one, and have the E as a digit 3 uh, as the key to the next one. This is the key to the entire message. This is designed by one of our colleagues. Actually, it's drawn by one of the colleagues. And we now have a question. So, we said there's serifs and some serifs. So there's an Adam and there's an E. These are the parents of all the typefaces that come, the two categories. So, when do we use serifs? When do we use sans serifs? Anyone knows? Actually, the answer is simple. Depending on the situation. Depending on how, on what are we going to implement it. There's a whole table, this is not chemistry, but just like the periodical uh, table of, of the elements, we have a periodical uh, table of typefaces. And uh, this is the key, again, always about keys. Okay, the symbol. The, the name of the typeface, the ranking within the family, and you can see that you're familiar with many of those. Unfortunately, uh, these are not uh, the full limitations of the typography. Uh, there are thousands and thousands of typefaces, but not all of them are good. I will get to that. So, uh, so this is obviously serifs, okay, um, you know, this is a sensor, so you clear when it has all these extensions, the wings, that's called a serif. Again, it's French, I don't know why. Sans serif is without wings or without these extensions. Uh, the origin of these serifs actually is from the uh, Roman Empire. So when they were chiseling the names, I, Caesar the Great, I, you know, kicked the Egyptian pharaoh's ass in the battle, I don't know what, and they put it on the wall, they chiseled it. Because of the chisel, and many of you work with the instruments or tools, uh, at the end, when they hit it, it had it made those little, it had those little lines, you know. So this is where the serifs come from, or as the rumor has it. Now, do you guys have computers? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. Do you have uh, built-in system fonts on the computers? Of course. 
Did you ever download a font that you like? Yes. Good. Okay. So what do uh, you know? What do designers like uh, more than fonts? More fonts. Even more fonts. Okay. You got to the metro pool Talk to the Pobitsche. Talk to Pobitsche. Okay. And if you've seen this horror movie, you probably understand the joke. Yes. Okay. Okay. So. I have that three fonts down here in design and design right. <laughs> But like I said, uh, there are 100% free fonts, more than 4,000. There's a lot of websites. I actually put a link or a description of 30 uh, places you can get quality fonts and not so quality fonts. Okay? And, uh, but they come with a problem that they are not done properly. Okay? So you can actually check fontself.com and uh, one more thing I don't usually do this but because it's for young people to, to learn I'm keeping a copy of this presentation of this thing. so if anyone wants to steal this presentation and make use of it feel free to do so if you want to copy it and put it on the internet or send it to a friend to benefit from it do so you know spreading the knowledge is great at least we'll have less uh, visual pollution if people you start using proper typography and proper design. Okay, now, I said each typeface has a feeling and I actually mentioned this fine gentleman's lovely choice of t-shirt, iron maiden and excellent typography in my opinion. You see, this digit 13 and this is the digit 13. Now this one communicates. We said one of the functions is to communicate, the big word, right? So it's communicating what day it is. Now, we also said it's used in design. So this is the design of a poster, which is, uh, you know, about a horror movie, obviously, because this doesn't look very friendly, does it? <laughs> anyone sees, if anyone sees this as a friendly, see a psychiatrist, you're not okay. <laughs> now, once you open your mind and you start seeing things with fresh eyes, so letters, as symbols, ink dots, as words, uh, digits, as letters, etc. You see where I'm going with this? Then you'll have this magical superpower, the new one. Uh, see this break between this? Some designer, unfortunately not me, uh, used it for the rebranding of one of my favorite ice creams. You know? Mm -hmm. Okay? And you see the space between this and this? Okay? So that also looks like a 13. Okay, this looks like a 13, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, because of the space. But now this communicates something nice because of the color, because of the shape, it's not threatening, etc. Actually, this is the clear one, it's 31 flavors. That's one flavor for every day of the month. And that's the story of Baskin Robbins and their rebranding. And in their typography, they made it playful because it's fun, it's not aggressive, etc. Am I going too fast? No. Okay, so message to wife. They're okay, I don't talk very fast, they understand. Okay, now, now the difference between being friendly and being aggressive. Well, here uh, you can see that the word aggressive is written in an aggressive tactics, and the word friendly is written in a friendly way. Now, you might know this, but usually sharp objects, triangles, are more aggressive. Circles uh, tend to be more friendly. Maybe it comes from people with nice bellies like Santa Claus or pregnant woman associating that the round shape is friendly okay and uh, symmetrical shapes are friendly uh, these asymmetrical shapes you know uh, they don't point it you know messy ones are not so friendly okay so uh, friendly objects horizontal lines versus uh, vertical lines okay now I've dug up this one, The Evil Dead 2, maybe the movie, maybe the video game, I don't know, but the point is it still has the same evil look and aggressiveness. And I dug up one of the old logos that we did for one of our Bulgarian-based clients, Fitness, Fitness Inc. Okay? So it's exactly the same typeface. But, you wouldn't know this now, hopefully you will. See the space between this horizontal and this horizontal and this space here? It's been changed, right? Yeah, okay, because because this looks visually better than this. 
we'll do it into this later on. And also we may see the dot was like, because this is a free font. This is customized. See the shape of the dot, the position of the dot, and also some other letters. So now you see how your typeface has a character, has a personality, and you have the responsibility to choose wisely. Now this fine gentleman, uh, Massimo Vinelli, uh, who designed the famous American Airlines logo based on typography, he also designed a lot of iconic posters, etc. He's most famously known for designing the, uh, the typography for the subways in the United States, or New York subways, which explains why somebody did a very nice creative portrait of him in the shape of all these uh, stops, you know, this one. Now, he believes that any designer, no matter the discipline, needs only six typefaces. Only six. And he based all his designs on these six. Garabon, Bruni, Century Extended, Futura, Times New Roman, and Helvetica. This presentation, I'm using Helvetica Neo. And I don't agree with Vassimo. And I'll explain why. Earlier I asked what font or what typeface would you use? And I answered my question by saying, well, it depends on the situation. It's the same way. What will you wear tonight? Well, it depends on where I'm going, who I'm going with, you know, the weather, etc. A lot of variables. So these six typefaces, although they are excellent typefaces, uh, but Vasimo can be right because we saw an example of Baskin Robbins and uh, we'll see other examples. This is actually an excerpt from a book and I want to use it for this project. And I was working in Sofia and I actually came across this and I took a picture of it. Just because you love XYZ font or typeface doesn't mean you use it for anything and everything. In fact, it was very creepy to see this surface about grave diggers with this typeface. Initially, I thought it was a fancy bar because it's one of the side streets of Vitushka, mm -hmm. the Sofia. And it's like, I thought, must be a nice underground bar. I don't know, should come here at night on the train. Maybe I'll see a lot of cloth uh, dressed people and I'm going to be wearing my uh, steampunk uh, thing. I'll be standing out and like, no, it's actually for grave diggers and or morticians. Thou shalt not choose the latest cool typeface for every new project. So inappropriate. Okay? Creepy. Unless you want the person that is buried to come out as a vampire or as a zombie, do not go there. They made a big mistake. And because the typeface communicates emotions, it's a negative emotion. Never gonna recommend them, never gonna go there. Although, it's a free advertisement. <laughs> okay, so here is a roadmap on your decision making. Of course, we don't think like that because we're emotional. We, we like to believe that we are rational, but we're emotional beings. It's okay, it's part of being human. So, for example, if you need it for a logo, you have to go to the whole process. We need a setup, some setup, what are we trying to communicate? If it's for a book, if it's for a newspaper, if it's for an infographic, etc. So, and it leads you to a choice of media or, the, or, or Helvetica or Times, etc. So this is just to show you that you have a lot of thinking to do before choosing the typeface and reinforcing the idea, don't use your favorite font for everything. There's a time for every typeface and there's a place for every typeface. Now, this is a very interesting guy, John Langdon. Anyone heard of John Langdon? Anyone watched the Da Vinci Code? Anyone watched uh, the whole entire series? I forgot the other names of the movie. Dan Brown. Huh? Dan Brown. Well, Dan Brown, yeah. Okay, well, actually, this guy created a lot of the, you know, these symbols and a lot of those logos that were there. So, what he does, this is an ambigram. Anyone familiar with what an ambigram is? <coughs> yes? Who said this? Yes, okay, what's an ambigram? No, I can't explain it, I just know. Okay, you just know. Well, well, this one, this thing explains it. An ambigram is uh, any set of letters that form a word that can be read either from left to right, or from right to left, or from top to bottom, from bottom to top. See, that's how I 
symbols the presentation. Before leading you here, you have to read the word E by yourself, and you have to see the 10 by 10. So your mind now is making flips, flipping stuff. So this is an Can you see that the way that the typography is created is that even, and it's so flexible and creative, that even when he flips it, you can still read the word ambigram. Interesting? Anyone finds this interesting other than me? Raise your hand, show hand. Ooh, nice, good, wow. The, the, the nice gentleman there? No, interesting, okay, great. Happy to do that. So it is very interesting and it's very flexible. At the end, I put a link to his book. You can also see his website. But everything that's in the book is on the website. So if you're, if you're a hoarder, collected by the book. If not, save it by another book and you can still see the book. So see, black and white. I bet you Iron Maiden would be nice if you could create Iron Maiden to be read from right to left, left to right, right? Yeah. That's your new challenge. So black and white, if you turn it, it's still black and white. 72. If you turn it, it's still 72. God. Focus. Anyone has problem reading the word philosophy? Or similarity? Okay, so that's creative. Uh -huh. And I have a little uh, presence for a bit later on. See, this is the same gentleman. My wife is right, I do talk about Okay, this is the same John Langton, and he's drawing the 3M logo. We're familiar. And he's trying to tell you. Things are not what they seem. You should look differently. So he's drawing it from one side and then he draws himself as if he's on the other side. In a way, me flipped over could be we. Okay, and that's not we in French, not we we. Tide, the detergent becomes edit. Okay, so this is the link to his uh, website. JohnLangdon.net. If you want to take screenshots, if you want, the presentation will be on her computer. Take copies if you want. And the present that I said is if you really find this interesting because it was a great show of hands, here's a link for something called flipscript.com. It's a free of charge website where it will accelerate the speed of your creation of ambigraph. You put in the two words that you want to create into ambigraph. The computer automatically generates it, and then you see how you can tweak it. If you want to download it, you might have to pay something. Just take a screenshot, draw it. Don't be lazy, you're artists, you're creative people. Okay? And you cannot be outsmarted by the computer. It took a lot of deposit to dialogue. When it is in the cigar, she's visiting a lot of presentation. It is she's visiting a lot of presentation. It is she's visiting a lot of presentation. It is she's visiting a lot of presentation. Okay. So, so love it or hate it, okay, you can use it, try it, it's for free. And you can see the negative space love and the positive space hate, kind of like a yin yang, you know, as a philosophy. So, I said earlier on that one of the most important and difficult things to do is to think, okay? And that, that differentiates us from a lot of creatures that are based on instinct. But I forgot to add one thing. Which is, it's not enough for you just to think. What's important for you is to think differently. Because that by itself is the definition of creativity. When a low probability uh, solution becomes high probability, then there's a eureka moment, and immediately uh, you have a new solution. So don't just think, think creatively. But you have to start with thinking. And with practice, you'll be thinking differently. Here's an example of how we said here, we're going back to hieroglyphics. Hieroglyphics were shapes. Letters are also shapes. We've proven this fact because you didn't actually read the words of the paragraph. You read the first one, the last one, and made up the stuff in the center. But accurately. You also did this again when we flipped, we changed it to the entire paragraph with digits and letters combination. We succeeded. Upside down, right to left, you did. So, now going back to the. Everybody knows this symbol, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, you guys, you guys, yeah, you, you're very familiar with this one. Okay, he's a player. Okay, uh, anyone familiar with this symbol? Oh, oh, so you can see that symbol over there. Do you see the similarities? Other than the color and the ears? 
Well, believe it or not, this might be promoting, let's say, pornography, maybe. Uh, this is anti-pornography. This was the logo for a campaign in Dubai promoting anti-pornography. So the word no, that's actually N-O, no, but in Arabic, la, okay, is inspired by the shape, by this shape. See, just, to, just by keeping increasing this dot and moving it to the center, it actually became no. So basically say no to pornography. Okay? That's their message. To each their own. You know? Everybody make up your own mind, but okay. Now we, we move to the visual identity logo, which is a passion of mine. And before we dig deep inside of it, don't be frightened. Branding is in general, logos in the center. But to create a logo, we need to have visual identity. And part of that visual identity is other than the colors and the layout and the imagery, is typography. So now we're going to focus on typography and logos. Okay? So we know it's an ambigram. Now, do you know what's a monogram? Show of hands, monogram? Okay, mono? Mono? Mo what? Okay. Gram? Instagram? What's Instagram? Instagram. Instant messaging. Okay? Okay, so it's a message. So, monogram, symbol, a single symbol, communication. Okay, so monogram. Examples of monogram, just to make the point, is uh, could be from one letter, like the letter P, it could be uh, two letters, like LG, HP, DW, right? It could be a single letter of the G for Javinci, and you just use it four times, and of course HM, mm -hmm. yeah. And CNN, also known by Donald Trump as fake news. Okay, uh, 3M, we saw it a short while ago. Anyone familiar with this logo? Okay, so this is original the logo BT Bulgarian television. And this one is. Anyone familiar with this? Can you. No? Okay, well, these are Bulgarian letter forms. It's about the folklore festival. Okay, folklore festival. So. Uh, these three are the works of uh, Stefan Kanchev. For those of you who don't know Stefan Kanchev, you should be ashamed of yourself because Stefan Kanchev is a legendary Bulgarian artist and graphic designer who is one of the world's recognized top 10 ever to live. Uh, his name is on the top 10 list next to Paul, uh, Paul Rand, Michel Beirut, and others like him. So basically, uh, like the creme de la creme. And yes, he's Bulgarian. Um, unfortunately, he's deceased. So I put a link to his website so you can study his work and see how relevant it is. Because he's into different disciplines. Not only into logo design, but also into art and many of the uh, stamps and signages that you grew up with or your grandparents grew up with are actually related to one man. So. If I were you, I'll look up out of curiosity, Stefan Kanchev. This is an example that we did for a client uh, on the basis of monogram to show you how flexible it is. A letter can be made of anything. Here is a couple of speech balloons. Why? Because crowd media is into the business of advertising. But because they don't have a single vlogger or vlogger fashionista that has 30 million followers, so what they do, they take your money and then they give a small part to each one of those different vloggers that combined together will get you the 13 million impressions that you want or the 3 million impressions that you want. So that's the concept of this uh, logo of crowd media. And because it's supposed to be friendly, it's a sans serif type face because of the roundness of the sea, it has to be with rounded edges, etc. And here we have increased the kerning, which is the space between the letters to balance out the word crowd. The word crowd is bolder and bigger because that's the name. Meat is a description, so there's always a hierarchy. Remember the CV that we started off? There's a hierarchy, telephone, place, etc. So always a hierarchy. There's always a design. Now, one of the many definitions of design, you know what design is? Okay, it's not a big question, but there are many Definition of design. For me, the one I like the most is design is thinking made visual. Is thinking made visual. 
So designers thinking made visual. So always, when you see a nice design, there's always a thinking behind it. A different type of thinking, not just thinking. So here, the original thinking was very shallow. Finland are its center, Arabic, English, because by law you should have both languages, and this is the flag of, of uh, Oman, which is the same color as the flag of Bulgaria, white, green, and red. Now, we have to turn this into this. And what we did is, based on this shape, to still have the visual to still have the visual continuity and a link between the past and the future, we took these shapes and we turned it into the letter F. It's an eye center. So you can see the F, but also you can see maybe, you know, the eye, the cornea, anyone? Okay. If you don't see it, it's okay. You can be their client because they can help you improve your vision. <laughs> okay. Another thing, this is called Finland. We use the blue color, which is the, the Finnish flag. Also, if you hide the top section, as they do, you know, when you go for a lesson, okay, can we read this? Yeah, okay, how about now, you know? So, if we do this, this is actually the right proportions of the Finnish flag, which is blue and white, in case you're not familiar. So, we also needed to create a custom made Arabic typeface to match and to mimic the Latin one. Because when you place signage, you have a limited space. Like, see this here? If that's a space for the signage, you cannot have one language, you know, tall and one is short, one is wide, and it has to be consistency. So this is a challenge. Okay? In uh, Hungaria, we have this client, Gumish Amber. I don't know what it means, but I think Gumish has something to do with Guma. Okay? They're a race team, and they're also mechanic, and they also sell tires. So we have to use a, a monogram where to communicate, you know, another shape, which is the shape of a star, and create a unique uh, typeface with an arrow going forward to show the movement, and that's why the star is also slanted. In order not to make this too much longer, I did not include the pictures of the implementation of the logo on their t-shirts, sweatshirt jackets, racing caps, and cars. Uh, also, while in the category of monogram, uh, and why imagination is very important, this is a typical sans serif typeface with the letter R, correct? Alright? By simply understanding a bit about typography, doing a little bit of thinking, different thinking, added a triangle here and took out two triangles here, and it became a pencil. You see the pencil in the negative space. Remember the word love hate? The one we showed a little bit earlier, love hate. The love hate, positive, negative. So now, Learn how to use, be positive, but also think of the negative. So, this is one of the rare cases of negative is a positive, and positive is a negative. Okay? And of course, then this was the initial one, but then we thought it's better to balance it and put it sideways. It's still readable, uh, legible, and the pencil is actually pointing to the name. Okay? Нещо обяснява как трябва сме еко и не знам си какво си. И се оказва, то казва, ти не можеш да си представиш колко много мастило всъщност отива аз да принтирам един документ, защото най-отгоре е сложено в логото, нали, в а, този син цвят. Така че това също а, някой някъде господин дизайнер трябва да се замисли. Ами, mm-hmm. това е много важно. Казахте, сме го замислили. Аз и ще кажа защо се взети с това нещо, защото нали, Раша да. там горе вече да. е изчистен, нали, като се направи негативен да. позитив. Или да речем, ако трябва да подпишеш документ, който трябва да се принтира, по-добре ползва отборното лого. Да, това е по-силно, естествено. Да. Но. It's, it's cost, it's cost effective, да. Uh, това е много uh, интересна точка и. Може да говорим часове за това или може да говорим, но няма да го правим сега. Това е пак изчистен F3 дизайн. Uh, uh, start, 
I'm finished. So you can find the relationship between the letters and the forms. Okay? So this has uh, been published in a book called Design and Design. And it's been featured on a professional website on best designs called Global, uh, Global Design. Designer, sorry, dot com. You can check it out. And uh, this is how we implemented it on uh, you know, different regions on their website. It's very important when you design any uh, corporate identity or visual identity, especially for yourself. I think you all want to have a logo, they can make it as a tattoo, they can put it on your clothes, on fashion, or maybe on your CV, and on your company, on your studio, right? So it's good to you, for you to know this topography. It's going to come useful. Uh, also, think where it's going to be implemented. I'm going to link it to this is remark. If it's too colorful, it's going to cost you a lot of money. And for the environment, is not good. It's going to take more time. And usually in business time is money, also not good. And then, if you want to print it on a t-shirt, as a silk screen, if you have gradients, vignette, uh, etc., not good. If you want to do embroidery, forget it, baby, it's not going to happen. Because the technology of embroidery is still thread and needle, etc. You cannot get these gradient colors. Uh, if you want to do hot foil, debossing, embossing, all these different effects, forget it. So, hmm, you have to think, but you have to think creatively, okay? So there's always a solution, it's up to you. You are the designer. The design is thinking you make visual. You want to make a visual, think how you want it to be environmentally friendly, but also pocket friendly, okay? So that's the link. And again, just like Different types have different emotions and different characteristics. Colors also communicate on an emotional level. When we chose black and white purely for the fashion company, it wasn't because they're trying to save money, they're rich as hell, but because black and white doesn't go out of fashion. It's classic. So we wanted to do a design that is not trendy, but stands the test of time. So when you look at it, long time after, you know, many years after, it's still relevant. And that's what I love about uh, uh, Stefan Kunchel's work. If you see it today, you think he's 20 years old, he's very cool, he's, uh, you know, uh, having, wearing a metallic t-shirt, not a metal, and that, uh, you know, but he's actually deceased. He died at the age of 87 while working, and uh, his work is still fresh, it's still relevant. So that's something important to design for longevity. In fact, this F3, was created around 20 years ago, believe it or not. This is a very internal based client, uh, Soundwave. I think it goes without saying, you can see the S and the W coming together, creating a wave. Okay? So, again, good command of typography. We start seeing letters as shapes and, sh and digits as letters, and upside down, and positive and negative that your mind is more and more creative and more flexible and you can turn uh, the, the clay into any shape you want. Uh, this is another one which is called Galactic Group and actually this is the letter G, capital G for Galactic and Group upside down, okay, and creating the nebula. You know what's a nebula, right? No, nebula, the, when you see this swirl, not the one in your coffee, but similar, there's one in space it's very colorful, it's called the nebula, I think, I don't know what you call it in Bulgarian, but it's the nebula. nebula. Yeah, okay, that one, okay, the concept, this was also published in two books uh, on uh, and design. Uh, here also, we're using the positive and negative space, so you can see the negative space M uh, for Munich, which is, for those visually impaired like me, this is the negative space, so that's M and for motor works, and this is the positive M. And of course, we have to create a custom-made Arabic version of this one, which is the same width, and the same height, and the same stroke, and the same elements for visual con uh, continuity. This is also a very good turnable client, which is uh, Daniel Standard. Whenever you are turnable, on the main street, you'll see it. I think you can see the D for Daniel, and I think you probably see the negative space, some sort of a mobile, device. Can anyone guess what these guys do without cheating and reading software development? <laughs> they do apps. Okay, so 
we have to communicate that. Here it's a bit more challenging. This is called Wardat Riyam. Wardat Riyam means the flower of Riyam. This is the letter Ra, this is the letter Ra. And if you can tell, this shape is actually this shape in the naked space, and this one is this one. So this is a monogram, but in Arabic, embedded in the flower as part of the corporate identity, visual identity of it. And uh, when you have good command of a language, I see you're all, most of you are very, have very good command of English. I'm assuming your Bulgarian is better than your English, not like me. So once you have command of at least two languages, your mind is more, is more open to more possibilities because you have different shapes of letters and you have different words. So your mind is thinking, let's say, with a term. So in this case, we were able to do the following. If we, this is both English and Arabic at the same time. See, if I remove these two dots and we look just as this shape, it's the Q. But if I remove this tail, then it becomes this letter, half for Kabila, which is a holding company. Kabila means holding company. So uh, by by thinking outside the box and by having better command, you can have more uh, visuals and uh, more ideas. Uh, in this example here, better homes. You see the you see the small B, and because of the spacing, you see the small H. So that's B for better, H for homes. And in the negative space, we put the small squares. And, it should, and we played around to make it look like a home or like a building or a house. And this Hunaidi group, which could be an ambigram, because you can read it in any way you go, it's a simple shape, Hunaidi group, so that's a small H and a small G. So during the, using this geometrical shape, we're able to use uh, to create this uh, uh, monogram. And here, Edward Law, I think from the shape of the E and the G, you can tell it has something to do with education. So can you see? So you can tell it has something to do with English. So type is flexible, type is creative, you are flexible, you are creative. If you are not flexible, you need to be flexible <laughs> if you want to be creative. Okay, so the only barrier is you. This is an example of, again, thinking. Uh, Paragon Human Design, PhD. So what is, why is the P in a question mark? Why is the H having an exclamation mark? And why is the D a simple D? Well, because this visualizes the process where a person has lots of questions, needs answers, through these courses gets the answers which are surprising, which lead to clarity and understanding. So again, you have to think, right? And here a holding company's function is to have many companies underneath it. So here we used development enterprise holding. I think you can see the D and you see the E, some will see the H, some will see all of them. So. We, we created a capital H that actually shows a small D for development and a small E for enterprise. So the visual embodies the concept of a holding company. It's holding everything together. So these are a few examples of stuff. Now, in logo design, there's so many. We have the ambigram, monogram, we have the logotype, and with the symbols like Nike and Apple, etc. We're not going to go through these. Bear with me, we're almost done. I see some of you became very chatty and loving and caring, and some of you sleepy and bored. Okay, so I promise it will be over soon. So here is an example, for example, of the Newman logo, which you can read it upside down. Unfortunately, this brand has died. It was a fashion brand back in the days. The London bus, see how they made just with the positioning. The only thing they did is broke down the two letters all down, and voila, you have a double-decker bus. Uh, the Visa logo for those shoppers is similar to the Avis for rent a car. Just this one has those small little, kind of like status for movement, and this one doesn't. But both are slanted because they want to uh, illustrate movement. Uh, this is the logo of my company, Paragon. And uh, there is no symbols. We have people who can draw and paint, very talented artists. And I say, well, why didn't you create a symbol? Well, because before the computers screwed up everything for most people, <laughs> okay, people, there were more artists and calligraphers. And when you go to Gutenberg and say, I want Times New Roman in uh, Paris size or in Geneva size, they didn't have the point or the pica 
as a measurement. They have names of cities, of, of capitals. So let's say a Geneva size would be equal to like nine point size in today, and uh, a Paris size would be equivalent to 12. But only, the only bold size was referred to as parallel. So you can say about times New Roma in parallel, and it would be equivalent to 20 points in today's measurement. That's the only name that is repeated twice. So you have a paragon and a double paragon. So if paragon is 20 points, a double paragon is 40 points. There is Paris, there is no double Paris. There is Geneva, there is no double Geneva. So that's why we wanted our logo, our logo to be based on a logo type, because we respect the power of typography. Uh, here's another example from the United States of America, where we created this typeface, and we deliberately did not do the O as a circle. We wanted it to look like a box, and we wanted it to look like a tick, like the right choice, because it's flexible. So Orange Crew is an IT consultancy, so you, if you choose to work with Orange Crew, you're doing the right choice. So again, you can reshape uh, the, the, the typeface and the typography. Um, this one is K Oceanfront. Uh, K means white sands, it's a spa resort. So this is hand lettering that later on was digitized. So yes, you can still use hand lettering. And here we use the Arabic calligraphy to shape it like a leaf for this very nice uh, green neighborhood in Muscat, okay, by the word of Jinnah. So this actually is calligraphy of Jinnah. And uh, there's a very famous quote in the same book, Thou shall not use comic sans. Fortunately, I have not read that book by, at that stage. I created the logo for Blaine. This is 25 years old logo, before emojis for those who use a user emoji or a visit emoji. Well, that's before the emojis. We were still typing stuff, you know, semicolon and a bracket. So that's old. It might still look relevant, maybe, maybe not, but this was also awarded. Uh, because I didn't know that I'm not supposed to use Comic Sans, a typeface that has been verified because it was created on behalf of Microsoft back in 1995 and became so popular people use it for wedding invitation, birth invitation, party invitation, funerals, uh, car wash, car sale, etc. Okay? And, and here we see that we use the letter P as a scissor. Again, this was also featured in a book and won a word in Hyderabad in China. Okay, so imagine the shape could inspire you. The same solution was done for, uh, uh, this was in Bulgaria, that one was in Kuwait. Uh, the same solution, scissor letter. So you see here, the scissor was uh, perspective and the first letter as part of the B. Here is actually the letter M. Uh, Red and legal. Okay, so the letter D became the your bag because it's kind of like Airbnb. This is in Sofia. Uh, this is a Korean restaurant, Arirang. So we had to do this custom, uh, you know, calligraphy to represent that spirit of the Korean restaurant. This is for a Kuwaiti singer. You might know what's written there. Actually, you do. It's uh, Sam. Her name is Shams. Shams. So Shams means. Uh, uh, you know, Swanson or Sun, and then we implemented this design and all of her CDs, packaging, etc. Now, this came many years after my attempt to create the typeface. If you recall earlier in my presentation, I got inspired to try to create my own typeface and to simplify <coughs> those complex calligraphic letters into something simple. It is that attempt that became fruitful many years later when we successfully, when successfully created the logo for Shams and got it implemented. So, experiment. Don't be afraid to experiment. Here, this is an ethnic group, ethno group, that is in the League of Turnival. Uh, so what we did is took the digit 5 and the letter Alf, which is the first letter in the alphabet, and tried to create, you know, <coughs> the word Bulgara, which is the name of the band. Uh, I think the band is... Uh, what was the name of the... Kirodop. Yeah, what's the name of the guy who's leading this band? Kirodop. 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 Yeah. 
So that was an experiment there. Okay? And then what we did for this beauty salon is we reflected, by the name of reflection, we reflected the Arabic typography to, to, to try to create Latin typography. I hope you can read the word reflections. Okay, good. See, see the earlier slides, earlier training, and you have very fresh minds. Now you can read it. So see, it's everything is flexible. Uh, this is hand lettering, and what you said, we use only CMY, uh, sorry, only three letters out of the CMYK. We just left the magenta out because we try to communicate with are cost effective and we're always thinking. We also, that we are avant garde and we are fresh. This is the logo of my company when I was like maybe two years older than you guys, okay, maybe three, you know. So that's why it was graffiti. I want to make a statement. I'm not allowed to do graffiti, it's illegal. I could go to jail. So I said, I'll call my company graffiti and I'll use, everybody's using computer typefaces, I'm going to use hand lettering. And everybody's using full color, I'm going to use pure, pure colors. 100% cyan, 100% yellow, and 100% K, which is K is coal, German, for black. Okay? And ironically, the word Wodlin, coal, is also based black on black. So, no magenta, no need for magenta, we're cost effective. Uh, here we're communicating for a company called Dalit Sat when they first invented satellite internet, okay, with the direct link. So, I saw the shape, shape of the letter D as uh, an, an, an above, and I thought, what goes directly from launching to target? Well, an arrow. So this represents the direct link. Of course, this was done a long time ago, no excuses, we live and we learn. When I see this, I say, like, why the hell did I stick the C to the T? I'm stupid. No, actually, I'm not experienced. wasn't experienced. Why did I make the D so long? Because I wasn't thinking. I was thinking and I was not thinking creatively or differently. So a lot of things could have been modified, changed. But then again, this is how experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. Okay? Right? Uh, another favorite of mine is Core Media. This is 100% ready-made computer typeface. You probably recognize it, or you probably have it. But when I reduced the kerning before the two letters and stuck them, I started looking in a very positive way at the very negative space. Okay, and I saw, oh, that looks like a projector, a cinema projector. Hmm, why don't I put these two dots here and make it look like a TV screen or a TV monitor and then hmm, in this why don't they put these buttons to make it like a mobile this company is a media company they place ads on different screens and there was a concept called the fourth screen revolution the first screen being the golden screen cinema the silver screen which is the second revolution which is TV the third screen which is your computer the internet and then the fourth screen is mobiles. Now everybody has a mobile, not everybody has a computer, everybody has a mobile. So just by simply choosing, thinking about choosing the right typeface, having a little bit of knowledge about typography, reducing the space, being able to see the negative space and the positive space, voila, here's your embodiment of the fourth screen concept. All right? Now, Harold, anyone knows Harold? Lady Diana uh, was having an affair with the son of Dudi Al Fayed, the owner of Harrods in the UK. Okay, all right. Anyway, the Queen ordered the, the MI5 to kill Lady Diana and her boyfriend because she didn't approve of the relationship. Long story short, the father of the guy on, on that story, Harrods. Now, you, you see how it's implemented? This is Harrods, which is not Harrods. Somebody like this typographic solution for a brand and decided to borrow it, okay? Now, copying is not the most sincere sign of admiration, except if I'm copying your dress code because I like your style. When it comes to, into commercial, into commercial, into business, copying is the purest or sincerest form of theft. Please do not copy. Please do not steal. Please do not label it under telepathy or under uh, homage or under any other label. Just be yourself, be creative, think differently. 
Uh, I'm famously quoted to saying that lobos are like DNA, not to our like. So, nobody can convince me that this guy was inspired of telepathy. Can anyone make this argument? This is pure theft, right? How would you like him to steal your designs or your... Uh, okay? But you wouldn't mind if I shop at the same shop that you shop at, right? Okay, right? Okay. Now, this kind of talk got me into a lot of trouble. Okay? This trouble. I got uh, you know, into a lot of publications because I exposed the Dubai Lakes Creative Festival for awarding an agency with Agency of the Year title. They used <coughs> copycat advertisement. They copied and they stole other people's work. And I exposed them on my blog. Uh, they took the award from them. The media, some liked me, some didn't. You have to stand for something. Because if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. So I decided to stand for something, and I did. So they even put my name in this poster design that once proved too many, uh, etc. It was a big scandal. Uh, long story short, it led to the changing of, on an international level of all the rules and regulations of participating in creative awards festivals. Basically, I fought, even for you, for one day when you participate in a competition, I made it more difficult for the plagiarizers, for the copycat, for the thieves to take away credit from you, from stealing your work or from getting awarded for stealing your work. You're welcome, by the way. Yeah? Okay? Now, uh, the last thing is localization challenge. Uh, in Bulgaria, I've seen something that that, you know, some products will have only English, some will have only Bulgarian, few will have both, some will have Italian, some will have Chinese. There is no consistency. That will change. There will be consistency. And I think by law, eventually, you should have both the Bulgarian language, because it is the language of the country, and because we're part of Europe, okay, then we should have some other language. And both should be consistent. So, when we're given this logo, don't kill me, I did not create this logo. And this is the typography that was given. Our challenge was to, to change the proportions and to fix it. So we had to create uh, a typographic solution for the word Assas, the name of the company, that works in both languages and in a consistent manner. Because then we have to implement it in all of these. Okay? So consistency is important. Same thing applies here. Al-Waha, communicating. Waha means oasis. And we have to communicate, uh, you know, this feeling of relaxation and this residential neighborhood that's being developed. Now, the inspiration of this came while being on vacation and looking from a window of the hotel that has this shape because it's Oman, it's Mastab, and they have lots of palms, as you can see everywhere. So, inspiration is everywhere. Keep a fresh set of eyes on you at all times. Okay? Uh, show a diners, again, the consistency between the, both the Arabic and English. And in terms of the symbol, there's a fork, there's a negative space, uh, palms, and there's actually the shape of a pot where they use uh, to spice the meat and cook it in these jars. It's for a restaurant that serves this type of food, so the solution is appropriate, but it, with the wrong typography, it would be a mess. And uh, here, the solution was easy. Japanese restaurant, wasabi sushi, no-brainer. We customized our knowledge of typography to make it look like Japanese. You can see this? Okay. Anyone else getting angry other than me? Okay. Fashion code is two words made up name, fashion code. So again, the challenge was to create the, the logo type because in fashion, trends change all the time. Colors and shapes and everything. So we have to make it long-lasting, so we made it very simple and basic on the local client, and we created Arabic to match it, and this is the actual signboard, okay, and the actual material that's created. In fact, on the topic of thinking creatively, they didn't have a big budget for advertising, so we noticed that a lot of people carry their favorite bag or favorite brand, and repurpose it. So, on these bags, the smallest one, which is more, uh, which is the, the more natural size size of a bag, we made the handles much taller or longer. So after you buy something from them, you don't throw the bag. 
and we made sure that it's not laminated to be strong to use it. We noticed that a lot of people are wearing it just like a bag, because the bag is really nice, and it's durable, and it's fashionable. So by making the handles longer, now we purposed it, people are reusing it. And that was their free of charge advertisement. Actual people carrying their bags all over the town. And we implemented also on the website. Uh, E-post, electronic, uh, electronic uh, emails that are legally binding. It's like e-signatures. You can't fake it. It's yours and it's binding. Now the, ch the challenge was to create it. And it's easy. Oh, the letter O, how flexible, the circle. Okay, so we created that one. Uh, unfortunately, after we created this one, somebody woke up from the time and said, hey, I was about to tell you, we'd also like to have a lot of kind of narrative. Like, ooh, shapes of the letters are different, proportions are different, so that was really a nightmare. But we managed. So basically now, even if you take these two on transparent papers, you'll see that the position of this O in the digital envelope with the pixels will, will exactly be on top of this one and that the stroke and the sizes are identical. So, more of the story, always stick to the brief, and always have a brief, always make sure that everybody sticks to the brief, otherwise you're gonna have a lot of challenges. Okay, well this is one challenge that's, uh, that's been defeated. Same thing, consistency, Arabic, English, aqua pure for bottled water, rumors, is a restaurant, Jupiter, okay, same thing, you see the letters, all created from the Latin, cosmopolitan, looks like a, a planet or a moon, cosmo. And uh, this one is, uh, again, for a hotel. And notice how the typeface is classic and it's matching with the serenity of the logo. This is done in embroidery as well, published in a book called Really Good Logos Explained. This was done by one of our ex-colleagues, and also a very respectable artist that is residing in Vilipo Turnable by the name of Rosen Christoph. If you know him, that's great. Tell him that I said hello. If you don't, get to know his work. He's Bulgarian, he's artist. You should be proud of your heritage and you should be proud of your, of your art. This is done for a client in Vienna. Again, we have to choose the typeface that matches the illustration. Fushita is a made up name. The F is for fashion, and cheetah is, is a very elegant, fast, sexy animal. From a female perspective point of view, at least that was the brief. That's why she, as the owner, has the cheetah as a symbol of power and elegance, wearing the crown. And the typeface matches it. And last but not least, I know I showed a lot of Arabic English because our work in Bulgaria is not as uh, widely spread as we want it to be. Most of our work is done in the United States and in Kuwait and Oman. But this is an example of work that we did in Bulgaria. And as we have done with the localization of Latin into Arabic or vice versa, we have done so in Bulgaria. So this is also a very good term of a client. Anyone has any uh, uh, thermal, cooling, heating uh, uh, problems can uh, get the contact from her. Uh, he's a personal friend. Uh, of mine and uh, very talented, uh, but you have to catch him, he's a pilot, you have to catch him when he's in town. And we're almost done, these are the 30 typographic resources, if you want to write them down, take a screenshot, take it from Jesse later on, steal the presentations up to you, and these are the books that I recommend. Actually, there are eight. Remember when I said I didn't read this book when I created that, uh, that uh, logo? Okay, thou shalt not use Comic Sans, and I use Comic Sans. Well, this is the book. From all these books, this is the one with the wordplay, Langton, the ambigrams. This is called a type detective story, very simplified approach to typography. This is very useful. This one shows how typography and geographic design influence behavior, Mirko <coughs> Illich. Uh, these are very academic, and what is typography, all style. From these eight books, if you're only going to steal, borrow, read two books, I would recommend go one, two. I would recommend all of them, but then I know that you guys are not into reading, which means you're not going to read any of those. So you probably then will have to watch the movie Helvetica. Please, if you 
not going to read, watch the movie Helvetica. It's free of charge, it's on the web somewhere. And lastly, homage to StefanKanchev.com, uh, a legendary Bulgarian graphic designer and artist. Check out his work. We, we actually did an exhibition for him in Kuwait. It was very, very shameful that you're in Bulgaria and you don't know about him and Kuwaitis riding camels in the desert and driving Lexuses, know everything about him. Okay, so now I told you my story. Please write your own story and see typographies everywhere. You know where the exit is, so feel free to exit. If you want to know more about Tarot and my company, TarotMC.com. In case you want to know something about me, LoyalSpotted.com. Thank you very much. Questions, anyone? Today I have a free uh, special offer. No, first question is free, and the second one is also free. You get two questions, and the third one is complimentary. Uh, do you know what I mean now? I said, hopefully, when you walk in, you're going to have one pair of eyes, and we're going to walk out, and you're going to go, as you go look at the sun, and look at that logo, look at that t shirt. This will be better, yeah? and believe me, you're going to need this knowledge to present yourself as artist, as interior designer, you're going to need a commercial entity. A commercial entity by law is to have a logo. The logo should not be habits. Okay, all looks like habits. It should be something specific for you. If you are studying something other than graphic design, you, there's no shame in asking for help from a friend who's a desktop publisher, graphic designer, etc. You know? So, sure, no more questions? You want to exit? Okay, see, I'm a nice guy. I'm going to open the door. For you. I, see, I see that you guys are in a hurry. Okay, I think you guys are hungry. Uh, if you want to be in touch, you know how to get in touch. I'm going to give you a challenge. If you want to take it up, you can do it and email me. I'll be happy to give you feedback. If you don't, it's up to you. Create your own logo, either as an ambigram, or as a monogram, or as a logo type. In fact, even as a symbol, and you can email me the results. Okay?